All right, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Ovenek. Um Some of you recognize me from myself doing seminars here. Uh, tonight, I am introducing Sam Sharina, one of our Nikon Canada <coughs> ambassadors. So you'll notice me with a mic um, and some cameras back here. We're going to be recording this. So if you do want to make notes, feel free, but we're also going to be putting this up onto YouTube. So if you do want to go back and watch it afterwards to get any uh, uh, tips that Sam had, then absolutely you feel free to do that. Um, today, you're going to be talking about portraiture. Yes. So this is one of um, the, well, how many have we done now? Is this the fourth? I think this is three. Three. This is I'm three. Correct. So we've had a number of the business of photography seminars. This is just one of them. So uh, Sam's going to kind of walk you through the whole, the whole steps. <laughs> And I hope you guys really enjoy it. I know that whenever I hear Sam talk, it's, uh, it's always amazing for me to pick up little, little details. So uh, I'm going to introduce Sam and uh, let him take it away. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me tonight and uh, hope you enjoy the uh, presentation. Tonight's presentation is going to be on a, um, <clears throat> basically what we look for when we're photographing portraits. And uh, are we going in with a plan? And the plan is that, in most cases, is that we're going there to photograph and to be able to sell it. So we need to have a plan uh, on how to sell it. So we're shooting to sell. Okay, so it's not, we're, we're not just going there photographing whatever we see. Um, we're basically going in with a systematic system that, at the end of the day, we're going to be able to present and uh, we're going to be able to sell it, and that's basically part of the business model. Now, some of it is all this is similar. I mean, when the way we photograph weddings, we uh, photograph weddings to sell. In this case, it's portraits, and if it wasn't portraits, it would be an engagement session. If it's not an engagement session, it's um, uh, or either a family portrait, or even if you go to a, another segment, mean, uh, meaning a human figure. I mean, we're always going to photograph something so that we can sell in, in somewhat of a volume and in, in a storyline. So basically, we're going to move forward here. We're going to photograph the cell. We're going to capture and create the moment using light composition, form, shape, and texture. Create the story, create the fantasy, and then we sell it. So we're going to go in, and we're going to go in with an open mind, and we're going to create, and we're going to create in storylines. Okay, so to create bigger sales, basically portraits are photographed as portrait storylines. Okay, each set is a story. Each story is part of an event flowchart. So we're always thinking in that, in that mode. We're going to go in, let's say in this case, what I've done is we've, I've, uh, we're going to be looking at a basic family portrait. And it's just a family. It's photographed outdoors. Uh, there's four people in this family, if I remember correctly, uh, mom, dad, and kids. And we're going to go in and we're going to photograph the family group, parents as a couple, each child alone, children together, each child with parents, etc. Each set is a story. Each story is part of an event flowchart again. So we're always going in with that set. Now the whole, the whole thing is that when we're photographing the storylines, we want to be able to go into these... Uh, places, whether it's outdoors, indoors, and obviously we're looking for light and we have to be able to photograph in certain areas. We want to be able to repeat things three times. Okay, So we're not going in and we photograph one spot um, and machine gun shoot. We're going in and we photograph in three different areas, let's say, with three different lighting setups, uh, maybe different lenses for different perspectives. So, we're, so that, that way we're creating variety. So let's just go through this just a little bit. So we're going to photograph in storylines again, repeat each storyline three times. Use a different background for each set, okay, so that that way it doesn't look the same. So if we're picking on one part of a location, we're going to do the whole set, the family group, the breakdowns from that, and keep going. Then we pick another one and another one. Use a different background for each set. Change the posing style for each set. Change the use of equipment, which changes your mindset on be able to be able to be creative. If you're using the same piece of equipment, let's call it, I might start the first session with a 70 to 200. But at the time I go to that next spot, I might be using the uh, 105 
reason, you become at one with your lens, you start to think like your lens, the whole look changes. The next set could be um, more abstract. Maybe you want to go into something that's a little wider. Let's say you go into a 2470 um, and you're using it more in a wide angle style and you have a lot of perspective, a lot of foreground, a lot of background, and you're really using your composition to create a different look. So then you can do it that way too. And what you've basically done is everything is completely different from one to the other. Okay, so change the use of equipment. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Create different perspective by capturing with alternative lenses. <clears throat> Capture with another light source. Change your light source. So one could be with strobes, one could be available light, the other one could be continuous light or vice versa. Maybe you're gonna have four different things going on. Then the idea is to create variety. Variety is what creates sales. Okay, so if everything always looks the same, then your customer might say, well, this looks exactly like that. I only need one. But if it's completely different, then you're really gonna be playing with their emotions where they might need both. So that just gives you the possibility of a bigger sale, okay? I'm not known to be a hardcore salesperson, but for me, it's about the variety and giving them something that they must, it's almost like a must have, and it kind of sells itself. Okay, what a little nudge, but it does sell itself. Okay, so basically when we're photographing, every house is different, okay? So every house is different, so the first thing that we're gonna look for is light direction. Look for light direction, especially if you're photographing with available light. That's gonna give us that that variety in a quick mode, okay? And then at the same time, then you can move on to other things. Look for triangles and creating them in your compositions. Create lead-in lines to enhance your composition so that that way the look com is completely different and you can actually give yourself a creative mode to this and light subject to create depth, okay? Use the correct lens for look and perspective. All of these things uh, come into play. So it's not just going in somewhere and say, okay, I'm going to play with emotion. I'm just going to photograph with emotion with one lens. Well, it's not going to happen all the time. So basically, you have to create the emotions. You have to create the look. And you're going to have to create the story. Okay? They're not professional models in most cases. So you're going to have to really work with it. And a lot of times, it's just even their expressions. Some of them might have that, you know, that look. But at the same time, you have to give them another look. right? So one of them could be that eye-catching look that, that is a fine art type portrait. The other one could be that smiley, not the fine art type of portrait, but more a family style casual portrait. So if you give them a variety all the way through, then in, in theory, you're giving them two, three different looks that is going to be, um, is going to help your sales. So basically what you're looking to do is you're looking to maybe put a storyline book together or, and or print some things for the wall and they all have to have a different look in order to do that. Okay, create your signature style, okay? Um, I used to say, create a style that works for you. Create your signature style, that will work for you. At the same time, you can always alter that and always twist and bend, but people will be able to tell your style when they're looking at it, okay? Regardless if it's you know, something that has a great expression on it or something that's very uh, uh, abstract, okay? But it always has your flair to it whether it's the way it's posed, the way it's composed, um, lighting, the whole thing, okay? Your personality should convey enthusiasm and positive energy, okay? So basically, a lot of times, you, you know, you're, gonna, you're going to be introduced to a lot of different personalities as you're out there photographing. And you're gonna, be able to ha you're gonna have to be able to handle a lot of that and be able to be in control of the situation, okay? So always show positive energy in order to get out of there and do it properly, okay? Okay, so lighting techniques that we're gonna look at tonight is uh, some window light. Uh, actually, we're not gonna light it tonight, but these are some of the things that you're gonna be looking at if you're inside and outside. And in this case tonight, we're gonna look at something that is all outdoor, uh, under overhang some of it, okay? But some of the lighting techniques, window light, available light that's outdoors, and that we're gonna see today. Some of the tools that we'll be using maybe is battery, Battery power flash, uh, you can use an AC flash unit. Those are for things that have a lot of power. Um, and then there's speed lights for off-camera flash or speed lights for fill light situations, okay? 
And then, of course, there's that other source, which is continuous light that's been around for a long, long time. Now, every one of these um, give you a different look, OK? And that's the thing. So you always have to be prepared to use one of them um, just because you just never know where you're going to be, what time of day you're going to be there, and what you have to do while you're there. Now, for instance, if you're photographing a family that has some small kids, one could be six months old, the other one could be two years old. What time of day do you think you're going to photograph that? I'm going to say 11 o'clock because 10 o'clock might be nap time or somewhere around 3 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the afternoon right after lunch because 2.30 might be nap time. So at 1.30 in the afternoon, let's say June or July, and you're photographing outdoors, that's probably the worst condition you can possibly photograph. So we need to be able to control that. So we need to find overhangs. Uh, overhangs are like under trees or uh, um, overhangs in buildings and all that to create shade. Okay, so we're creating shade so we can create subtracted lighting and then we can use something that's called additive and the additive could be either a reflector or an off-camera flash, so on and so forth. So we have to kind of be ready for everything as we go out there. And of course, the lighter the equipment, the better because you can move faster and create more variety, okay? So these are the things that are very, very important. To be able to photograph in every one of these light sources is very important. For me, um, uh, being a, a photographer that photographs families and or weddings and all that, one of the main things that I had to make sure that I learned was how to handle bad lighting situations and making them in, uh, work for me in order to be able to sell something that makes sense, okay, and actually get good money out of it. So that's really, really tricky. So how many times do you think you're going to photograph in sweet light? How many times do you think you're going to photograph a wedding in sweet light conditions? You guys know what sweet light conditions are, right? It is? Okay. I would say hardly ever. And a family portrait, kind of hardly ever. Most of the time, it's going to be under bad lighting conditions. So very, very important to get that under control. The other thing is that um, not just the lighting, but even the equipment that you use, there's a reason for all of this equipment which we're going to kind of play with it in a little while, and we'll get to it. Anyway, to sell your images, you sell your images as fine art portrait collections. Okay, so they're not just pictures or anything like that. They're fine art portrait collections. Some of them are expensively made, meaning they're handmade and all that. Then, of course, there's the candid portrait that are a little bit less expensive for that volume printing type situation. So you have to kind of give them a variety of things in order to be able to uh, make your sale a little bit better. Gallery style frames to complete your sale. That's the, one of the easiest ways to make money is to present it all finished. So you don't send it to, give it to the client and say, go find a framer. You become the framer. Even if you make a little bit less margin on that, like a, a times two or a times 2.5, um, you're letting this portrait out the door, finished, complete, signed, and ready to go. All they have to do is hang it on the wall. So very, very important. Use a projector and a screen in your sales room uh, for viewing gallery to promote larger portrait sales. That is one of the best ways to, pr to sell uh, portraits on the wall is to be able to project it, all right? Um, usually just looking at a small 15-inch monitor is not going to sell you a 16 by 20 or a 20 by 24 portrait because people are visual, okay? They have to be able to see what it is that you're, that you're trying to sell them or where is it going to go on their wall. So they have to be able to know that, okay? So by, by um, using a projector, it always makes sense. I use a software called Fundy Software, and it's uh, wall art. They have a section in it called wall art. And basically, you can sell to size. You can project it, um, 1620, 11, 14, 20 by 24. You can actually project it on a wall and say, is that the size that you want? Do you want it this size or that size? And some people might say, I want an 8 by 10. You put an 8 by 10 on a 9 foot screen, what's it going to look like? It's going to look relatively small because a lot of people think 8 by 10 is big until they really look at it and say, well, I can't put that over a couch. It's not going to work. But a 20 by 24 is going to work. And you actually show it to them, in which I have something on here that I can show you. So it's really, really important to do that. Actually, and, and also, Fundy Software also creates an album page storyline creator so that that way the all the images that we photograph let's say in two or three different spots you're going to be able to print uh, create and print 
a book that is a coffee table book that's going to be there basically for a lifetime. So you're going to give them this. Some people say, well, I can go out there and print it myself, but they can't create it like you're the creator. They can't do it the way you're going to do it. You're going to have to process it, give it the look, give it the right softness, give it the right compositional crops. And at the same time, you're creating it in the storybook line where it all works together. It becomes like a portfolio, okay? So the impact that you're going to be able to create, they're not going to be able to do on their own. And that's where the money is, okay? It's in the time. They've got to pay you for the time to create it, okay? It's not that piece of paper. It's the time that goes into it, okay? So that's very, very important. Of course, if you're doing it in a home studio or whatever it is that you're doing, you're trying to sell it, play relaxing music, soft jazz, etc. usually something like that, where it doesn't put them to sleep, but at the same time gives them a beat and makes them feel good so that that way they're in a good mood when they're there looking at these things. And that's really important. If they're not in a good mood, their wallets stay in their pockets. Okay, if they're in a good mood and they want to buy that, things happen, okay? So it's very, very important. Studios should be clean and have an inviting professional contemporary feel. So not things all over the floor and things like that. It should be spotless. Wherever people come in, should be spotless. What happens in the back room, it's your business. Okay, so very, very important. Okay, sales, quality work demands premium dollars. Selling quality products, capturing quality equipment, capturing with quality equipment, sorry, gives your studio credibility and trust. So it's very, very important. When you're selling a book, for instance, I use Alma Poca. I mean, for me, it's because it's made in Italy. It's a, the whole stigma about it is created from there. It gets imported. It's, um, it's the Italian leather and all that kind of thing. Very, very important. Um, using the equipment. I mean, I talk shop with most of my clients. Everybody's, you know, everybody has cameras these days. So you have to have better equipment than the client. Okay, so you have to be on top of the game when it comes to that. So, I mean, if, in, in my case, I use a DA50. But if I was using something a little bit less and I'm trying to do uses as a professional and that client happens to have a DA50, things are happening here. So you have to have you know, at the top, you should be at the top of your game all the time, all right? So very, very important to have the right equipment, the right lenses, and, and that gives you, the, gives you a credibility, especially these people now. The days everybody knows, they're saying, wow, that's, that's a good lens or that's a good camera body, okay? Credibility and trust is one of the main things in business is that they have to be able to trust you, okay? And that's very, very important which creates, it creates larger sales, okay? If they trust, they buy. They don't trust, they don't buy. That's just basically it, right, in a nutshell. Okay, a studio should have the right image, proper wall display, a good product, a good price list, a good, better, best price list, okay, and a good presentation. So basically, your price list has to have three different sections in it where uh, there's everything for everybody in it. So there's going to be something that is a more volume-based type of sale, something in between, and something that's really high-end. And most of the time, they might buy one thing that's high-end, some things that are in between, and a lot of lower-end. Do you really care? Do you really care in the end? Not really, because your profit margins, if you were listening to some of the other presentations of it, you have a formula that you've based into all your, all your products. So you're making money on all those products. It's not about the dollar value by saying, well, I sold this for 1,000 or I sold it for 500. It's the profit margin that you made on all those products, okay? So when you put it all together, then that's where it comes down to. What's your average gonna be for every one of these sales per client, okay? So you have to be able to sell them more than just one piece, okay? So if you sold a book and you sold uh, a couple of wall portraits, things like that. Hey, we've done, we've done well. You have a good volume out of that, you'll make a pretty good living out of it, okay? So very, very important. And the presentation has to be really good. When you're making the sale, you really need to know your price list. And you need to know what you're selling it for, and you need to know all your products. Because sometimes, maybe that product isn't exactly what they want, but with a tweak, you just found a different product. Okay, and sometimes it can go as a little thing like, I was actually looking for something that was a little different. Well, that could be, <laughs> the sky's the limit, right? But a little different meaning, I didn't want color. I'm really, the black and white, you know, I, I don't know, but I'm not sure. So what did I just say? I don't want color, 
Black and white, I'm not sure. So what do you do now? So we don't have it? Or do we come up with something, even if you have to wing it right away and say, I've got the right thing? What about something that is desaturated with a little bit of the warm tone or desaturated a little bit of an occult tone? Warm tone for family portraits, you're probably better off because it's a warm thing. So a desat with a warm can actually take it to another other level. Framed in this type of frame, right away, you just keep going. What did you just do? You just created another product. Is it different? Just the color tones are different. Okay, and you gave them something that's brand new. And what did that create? Excitement. Okay, excitement. Do we know how to price it? Yes, because nothing's really changed. It's just the way we tweak it. But that's basically you just save the sale. And you're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. And that's why you really need to know where you're at and really know your price list and what you sell. Okay. Uh, this is Sam's camera bag. So basically I have the DA50. I have a 70 to 200 FL 2.8, which is the brand new 70 to 200. The 2470 VR, very, very sharp lens. That's my go-to workhorse lens. I have a 105 1.4 portrait lens. I have the 105 2.8 macro VR and the 1424 and a 200 to 500. And I also using the 5, 5 SB 5000, which I can actually use them as studio lights at times when uh, I don't want to set up studio lights, I can actually use that. And I use them with Westcott Rapid Box and umbrellas. Um, that list of equipment is not there just because I, want to, I like buying equipment. That list of equipment is there because every piece of that equipment does different things. The 105 1.4 is completely a different animal to the 105 2.8. They're completely different. They act different, they, they photograph different, so you get a different look, okay? One's a mic macro, one is not. The 70 to 200 is fantastic, sharp, fast lens. So, so I might start a session with the 70 to 200, switch over to the 105 1.4 for my second part of that session, and maybe go to you know, the, uh, the 2470 for another part of that session, just so that all three looks are completely different, okay? And what happens is you become that lens, you start to think like it, and you create accordingly, okay? So, I mean, I have some other lenses that are on my wish list, like the fisheye lens and things like that. And all, that, that, all that's going to do is give me a different outlook on things where your mind opens up to different things. Okay, so for moving on from here, we're gonna look at some images. These images are not cropped. So what you're gonna look at is images that have been worked, but this is just a straightforward family. I uh, went there, photographed these, uh, this young, young girl with her brother and her parents. And I've done it in a few different looks in that front lawn. So we were in the front lawn because the sun was in the back. So I couldn't use the back parts. So I had to only use the front of the house. So I did as much as I can in front of this house so that I can create a small storyline. Okay? So we're just going to look at it. Now, what's going to happen is you're going to look at expressions are going to change. Uh, the cropping is going to change. And then I'm going to show you basically how we created some uh, um, pages that are going to be for a small book. And then from there, how we came up with, uh, th through the software, I'm not going to go into break up the software, but I, what I did is took screen capture shots of the software so that we can get to the three portraits that are going to be on the wall. Okay? okay. So basically, uh, you can see that it's like a two to one ratio. Uh, highlight shadow, uh, you know, basically uh, if there's good light there, just use the uh, speed light as a fill and that would have been it for this. Okay, then we went to the front of the house. Now, of course, I did the uh, young lady, I did her brother in the same thing, so that that way things match up all the way along. And that's what's important, is that you'll be able to match it up. So now, in this case, the light's coming from the left-hand side. And again, all I did is I used the speed light as a fill. Okay, so I made sure it's like a two to one, three to one ratio, four to one maximum, because we have to be able to set up. This is not like one of these complete hardcore fine art portraits. This is a family portrait, so you have to kind of just go easy at it. Okay, and here's again. So of course, when we're photographing some of these images, some of them are with a smile, and some of them are not. You can't get locked in to one different look, and I'm bad with that because if I'm going for a look and I've gone to left field and that's the look I'm looking for, I forget all about the bread and butter ones. So 
start off, if you've got that problem like I do, start off with the bread and butter shots where you have that smile and all that. And then if you're looking for a particular look, then do it towards the back, but at least you have that. Okay, so that that way you don't forget. Okay, so again, uh, we have an expression and in this case, you're gonna see another image that she's not smiling so much, she's looking with her eyes. Um, but again, you have a lead in line that's going in, it's come all the way across and it's just exiting, going this way. So everything is basically composed, but it's very basic. So it's you lead in, lead out. And don't forget, these are not cropped as yet the way they're supposed to. This is something to view before we get to that. And the reason why I say that is, I haven't got a clue what we're gonna sell yet. Neither do I know what size we're selling, if it's re rectangular, or vertical, or square. So I photograph everything horizontal. I crop it as a lead in and lead out in horizontal mode. If I know I need a vertical with a DA50, I have no problem, I'll crop it as a vertical. If I know I need a square, I'm just taking the ends off and I have a square. If you photograph it vertical and you need a square or you need a, a horizontal because that's what they want to buy, what are you going to do? Right? Then you can't sell it. Sorry, you can't do it. Or it looks different. But at least this way, everything is continuous and then you, it gives you the options of being able to crop accordingly. Okay? So let's go to the next image and here you go. Same spot again. Now we have a completely different look. So, I mean, we go from here to here. It's a completely different look. This you can sell as a fine art piece. The other one you can sell as something maybe for a book. Okay, and again, you have the same thing. Nothing's really changed other than the expression. You're leading in and leading out. Okay, and, and it's still not cropped 100% yet. We st it still needs to be altered a bit. And we're still looking for light. And don't forget, we're just in front of a house. Okay, and we're doing everything in this one spot right now. And here it is. You got pretty good light that's happening there. It's about a two to one ratio and we have negative space coming towards the back. Okay. So we have positive, negative, And then if we want, if I wanted to make that a vertical, I take the whole left side of the image out. If I want to make it a square, I do the same thing and so on. Okay. And I'm just looking for other things and I'm just moving around looking for it. Am I going to sell all of these? Probably not. Okay. But I'm giving myself the opportunity and the opportunity is to keep photographing so that you can sell. Okay, here's another one. Now we're in front of the house. I use the two bushes to, to uh, and I put her in a center point symmetry. She's smiling, crossing legs, all of that. It's cutesy. Here we go. Okay, we're going to sell a portrait out of that? Probably not, but that's a great album picture. Okay. Okay, so now we have the brother. Now, if you notice, we put him back in the same spot as where the sister was. So why would I want to do that? I want to do that so that that way, if we end up selling a portrait, it matches up. Okay, so if let's say we're matching up two portraits for a wall, it's going to match up on that wall because it's the same spot. Okay, so here we go. We have uh, this young man. Okay, then of course we want father and son. And then we want, you know, uh, father and daughter and so on and so forth, right? And we just keep doing it. Um, are they going to buy it? We don't know. But that, those are great album filler shots, okay? Are they going to uh, buy something like that for a big portrait on the wall? I don't think so, unless they really want to put a lot of portraits. A lot of times those are just nice little fillers. If they're not for album pictures, then they're like for little five sevens for, you know, fireplace mantles, things like that. That's where it happens. Now, think about it. If they, if they buy a few of those at $30 each, let's say they buy five of them, okay? That's money found that you would have never sold unless you would have photographed them, okay? That might pay your expenses just to get there and so on and so forth and some of the printing bills and then everything else can be a profit. And that's how you got to look at it and say, okay, how much extra little things can we get out of this, okay? Little frames that go with it and so on and so forth, okay? So that's like, you know, $150 coming out of nowhere just by doing that. Okay, here's the family portrait. So we have, in this case, I did it in two different sets. So just a full length shot. Then we did some three quarters of that. And I picked spots where the lighting was relatively simple that the sun wasn't blasting through. Okay, bad time of day. Okay, here's mother and daughter. So here's another 5.7 I'm going to try to sell. Okay, and then uh, the two of them. 
you know, and a lot of times when there are kids like this, you have about three seconds because get a little closer, get a little closer, quickly shoot it because they're going to not want to be there anymore. Okay. All right. So then again, now we have another set of this young lady. Okay. Um, against the tree. And here's another one against the tree. Then we did the family against the tree. You notice that you see the system now, right? So now we have a look number two or even three in this case. Okay, then father and daughter against the tree, mom and dad against the tree, the young man against the tree, and then the family against the, uh, in front of the house. Now, how long did you think it would take once your lighting is set up against that tree to just move people in and out? Have them all on deck? Okay, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out, you're in, you're out. You'll get it done within seven to 10 minutes. Okay, because a lot of times they don't give, want to give you a lot of time. They've got to hurry up and do on, go on and so forth. So if you're organized, you can actually move pretty quick once your lighting is all set up. Okay? So in this case, uh, family in front of the house, um, this will mean a lot to them because they sold that house off now. They don't live there anymore. So now this image will have more sentimental value now than it did when I photographed it. Okay, so that's an easy seller. Okay, so let's look at this. Now we have a change of clothes. We're up against pillars. Uh, we have available light again. Uh, we have the uh, flash filled with the speed lights and uh, with the uh, diffuser on it, the uh, pocket box. We have pretty good light happening again. So we have, we're always looking for light direction. And we have this image here. And then this one here. Then we're going to switch over in a second here. So we gave, him, gave ourselves a lot of variety. You notice we went two, three different spots again. So we give a lot, a lot of variety. And now we're going to do this young man and do the same thing all over again. Okay? That spot, this spot, and so on. So you noticed how everything, there is a sequence to it all. So that that way gives us good opportunity to be able to sell it. Now, in this case, now we're, what we're going to look at is the same images that we were looking at 20 minutes ago put in album layouts. Okay, so now we have a bunch of album layouts, and then we're going to get to the portrait part. And then after that, if you have some questions, feel free to ask some questions. Okay, so here we go. So this is a, a good for a coffee table book. So this is basically the, a basic layout to it. Here's another basic layout, okay? Now these layouts were created with the Fundy software and a lot of times you can, they can automatically set, then you're gonna have to fine tune, tweak and crop, okay? Now notice, that, I mean, I'm gonna go backwards here. If you notice, if you give yourself the opportunity, you can use different layouts in the, in the design, okay? So that, that way you don't basically handcuff yourself, you give yourself the options. Here's another one, just, I mean, now you're setting it up. So here's mother and daughter, father and daughter. You notice from left to right, those are easy sell for books. Okay, and that's the whole thing. And basically, they have to kind of look similar in tones, backgrounds, and so forth. And here's this one here with the young man and the two of them together. Okay, mother and son, father and son. Right, so we're just, the, the sequence just keeps going. It's a, it's. Uh, the way our mind works. Okay, now the three of them and then the family. Okay, so we're basically going through this. Then we start over again, location two. Okay, so we have the two kids in the same spot again. And then we have the, a new spot with the young lady and the family up against the tree and more up against the tree in front of the house, the tree and mom and dad. Okay, and that, that basically gives you a pretty good feel to, to an album design, okay? And how to get to that part. So you can sell a pretty good small little album there, whatever you feel it's worth. I mean, you have to do the math to it. Use the formulas based on what I did a few weeks, uh, a couple months ago, based on how to price it. Okay, you know, you have a lot of work to do to get it to look good, but that's not something that they can do on their own. These are things that you have the vision, 
they have to be able to see samples of this in order to want it and you're going to create it in order to sell it. So at the same time, you don't want to stop there with little books or just five by sevens for mantelpieces. You want to take it to, to the fine art wall portraits, okay? So at that point, then you become a designer. The designer means that you ask them, where were you thinking about hanging some portraits? Is it in the hallway? Is it in the family room? Is it in the bedroom? And a lot of times they have a pretty good, well, I have a spot in the hallway, which we're going to call our picture wall. Or they'll say, you know, I was actually thinking about it in our family room over the couch. And you have to listen to the words carefully. And once you listen to the words carefully, the ideas have, you have to have the ideas, one after the other. Because if one gets rejected, you have to be on to the next one. Okay? So then they say, what do you suggest? Well, if they say to me, I want something on the wall over a couch, and there it is, and I know they have two kids, well, automatically things go in three. I'm thinking one of each child and a family in the middle. Okay, that's what I'm thinking. So they're thinking that's going to be a lot. But if you actually could show it and say this is going to be a sequence and, you know, based on size, so the size could be 16 20s on the end and a 20 by uh, 30 in the middle or something like that, they all have to be this streamlined and, and all the way across, then it's going to work. So basically through the software, you're going to be able to view this on screen. And here's the first image. So this will be based on a 1620. I just did this as a sample up so that you can have a look at it. So it's based on a 1620, and then you say, here it is, and this is basically what it's going to look like. You notice the price would be already on it. So you're not trying to pull any fast one. As soon as you show it, the price is there. If they say, yeah, I like it. They've already agreed to that. They already know what it's going to cost. Now, if they're going to try to take it for, you know, get a discount on it, well, that's something you're going to have to negotiate based on whatever numbers you can do. Okay, so there it is. And of course, there's the little slider so that you can actually crop it up accordingly. If they say it's too tight, too loose, whatever, you can play around with it. Okay, so here's another one. Now, notice we've actually matched this up. So we have the, uh, the uh, young man on one side. We're going to have the young lady on the other side. Now, don't forget, in my mind, I'm selling three. So now I'm working my way up. One, now here's the other one. Okay, so already, Look, there's another price tag there. Now already it's in two. Now it's times two. Okay. Of course, you got to frame it and all that. Now, the client base, the client that really wants this, and they're already agreeing to it, they're already there. You're already showing it to them per size. Okay. It's already there. Now you have to do the next one. Now we're showing the family portrait. Okay. This is the one that's going to be in the middle. So you've already talked it. Now, in this case, I'm showing to you in color. It could be color. It can be black and white. It could be desaturated in a warm tone. It could be whatever you want it to be because you're the creator, okay? It's up to you. You're the designer. So, and that's, in this case, I'm just giving it to you. It's very basic because I want to be able, everybody to be able to relate to this, okay? So it's a very basic family portrait with the selling structure to this. And there's the price to it. So whatever price yours might be, it's already set. Now, think about the math that's already happening here. Okay, these are all fine art portraits. They're not something that's going to be a blow up. They're going to be cleaned up. They're going to be printed. Faces got to match. Color tones have to match. Everything has to match. The frames have to match when they go up across. Okay, which is not part of this price. And then you show it to them based on a living room setup. Okay, and say, all right, kind of this is what it looked like. Now, in this case, that's not their living room. If you want, you can actually take a picture of their living room put it in the software, and you can actually put the perspective of the images bigger right over the couches. I just did it just very quickly, but you can actually show it to them on how it's going to look in their living room, their bedroom, their family room, wherever it's going to be. I mean, that's how you're going to take it to that next level. If you don't do it this way and you don't project it this way, you're not going to sell wall art portraits that easily. Okay. Some people have said, I've asked some, you know, I've had a lot of friends around the world saying, you know, how many, uh, how many big portraits are you, have you been selling? Well, I've sold more big portraits in the last, let's say, five, six, seven, eight years than I have for a long, long time. Some people say they haven't even sold 11 by 14. And that's basically, I think, it's in the approach on how it gets sold. That has to be it. All right. You know, some people say, well, I don't have a studio. Well, how am I going to show it? Well, 
you can get pretty good little projectors now that you can bring with you if you really had to and project it in their homes. I mean, and they're not expensive now, uh, not like it used to be. I mean, I think 300, 400, and maybe I, I haven't paid attention lately, but you can get some nice little projectors that, that will work for you against even a regular wall or a portable uh, screen. So if you really want to, you can actually get that done. Okay, and that's basically, in a nutshell, how to take this to that next level. So it gets started by the, the way it's photographed, the idea of, of, of having at least three different backgrounds in there, different spots, different lighting, if you can. If it's in one spot, like in this case, it was just on a front lawn, we picked up about two or three different spots in that front lawn to have different looks. One's the tree, one's the front of the house, so on and so forth. So that that way we can actually sell something. I mean, if you kind of did the math in your head with what I showed you here, we're looking at two to three thousand dollar order just based on what I just showed you. Okay, photographing on a front lawn for about an hour. Okay, is it is it all profit? Absolutely not. There's a lot of work that's involved. There's a product to pay for. There's equipment to pay for, and so on and so forth. But it's better than just going out there and photographing and just giving files and walking away. So it's very, very important to be able to make a profit and give yourself an opportunity to have a job during the week if this is what you want to do. Um, and this is how you're going to be able to do it. It's going to be hard to do just on a shooting itself. Shooting is about 20%. Then there's the sales and the manufacturing of the product and, and the designing of the product to take it to the next level. Okay, so uh, at this point, uh, if you need to, if you'd like to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, um, and Instagram, these are the addresses. Welcome to do that, uh, and just follow what I'm doing. There's no problem. Okay, now, if anybody has any questions, um, we'll take them now. I will hand you the mic just so that our when we do the recording, you'll actually be able to be heard. So just throw your hand up, and I'll pass you the mic. Questions? Don't be afraid. <laughs> Is it a good one? Yeah, I, Should I sit I, down? I, actually, I just saw, when I was looking at your gear earlier, I noticed you have a 200 to 500 yes. lens. Um, portrait shots. <laughs> portrait shots, like uh, when do you use it? It's pretty telescopic. You know, when, when, it's in, when you're in one of those areas where um, you have the distance to play with that, um, then that's the time you would use it. I mean, I use it for various things. I didn't buy it specifically for portraits. Um, I bought it for other things. Uh, but it does do a pretty good job with it because it is a long lens. And if, you, um, if you're photographing with long areas, you're blowing your backgrounds out relatively easily. I know that you're going to, you know, some people will say, well, we can do that with the 70 to 200 and or the uh, 105, 1.4, which is, you know, a portrait lens per se. But it's just to give you a different look. And, the, and this is where it is. The 105, which is a fantastic lens, and I love it, and I would never sell it, um, gives you a look. The 200 to 500 gives you another look. And it's because of the perspective of the lens and the distance and the angular of that when you're photographing, and what happens is the look completely changes. So you could use both lenses and you get two different looks. Got another question back Come up to the front, have a seat, we'll talk. <laughs> Actually, a lot, of, uh, <laughs> a lot of beginner photographers doesn't quite familiar how to do it. Um, I noticed the way you post them. Uh, any suggestions, especially for starters, how to learn that, get some ideas, uh, how to... Do you absolutely, have someone else absolutely. Hire for that? Okay, yes. And I, you know what, that's a very good question because it's very hard to learn posing um, without practicing. The one thing that I'm going to say is uh, when you don't have anybody to practice with, you practice on yourself. And the way you can do that is you go in front of a mirror and you basically practice by... Weight distribution started from the feet up. So if you're in front of a mirror and you start to say, I'm going to put my weight on my front leg, and you actually look at it 
as you're doing it in the mirror and you put it in front leg and then you can you turn your face. You already get a feel for this. Um, if you decide, okay, I'm gonna go more into a more relaxed mode, I'm gonna put my weight onto my back leg. Okay, there, well, there it is. Then basically there's always good light that's coming in usually because there's windows and so forth. Um, then you just turn towards the light and you're gonna start to get the feel for it. I felt that when I, you know, the posing works best when you demonstrate it to your client because most cases they're not professionals. And at the same time, when you're demonstrating, um, if you're demonstrating, let's say, a casual, a casual uh, setup and you say, okay, I'm 45 degree angle, the light is over here, I'm gonna do this, and if I turn my face, the light's coming this way, and it's nice and easy, and then I say, can you, okay, let's do this. And they're kind of doing this type of thing, and they're doing like this, you already know, hey, this is not gonna work, let's try something else, All right? And, and or you get them to do it with you. Okay, put your feet full, shoulder width apart. Good, they're looking at you, okay. Put your weight on your back leg, they've done it. Okay, now just turn your face and you kind of do it with them. And that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, it looks pretty easy, but like I'm doing it and it's pretty easy. I have a pretty good idea, but I've been practicing a long time, right? And, and I did a lot in front of a mirror. And, and that's probably one of the best things. I mean, every, every, every person's different. Okay, you have body sizes that are different. You have uh, one eye that's smaller than the other. Uh, depending on the part of hair and all that, that makes a big difference. Uh, what you, somebody might have a lazy eye. We're gonna have to really work all of this. And that's when a lot of those lenses come into play because you might have to back up and you have to turn that face. And every, even if there's a lazy eye, as soon as you turn that face to a certain point, boom, both of them are looking at you straight. There is that magic spot. You have to find it. Right? And, a lot, and at the beginning, it's, it's more difficult, but uh, you just keep working it. And the other thing is, when you're doing something and it doesn't look good, right? don't ever let that client know that. Right? If you have something that's in place, there it is, okay, turn, turn your face this way. And it looks horrible. You know it looks horrible, but it still looks good. You're not gonna show them that image anyway. That's great, here it is, click. I already know, if I took one shot, that's just to move on to the next. Right? And then, then I'll go and I'll change it. I see that there's some, but I never say, no, I don't like it. Hold on, let me redo this. Because what happens to the confidence? Right? The client loses confidence. So you have to work with authority. Okay? And you have to go in and out and, and really make it work. That was a good question, though. Yes, uh, we have a couple. Uh, my question is, uh, for example, you have a plan to a family portrait, right? Is there any uh, suggestion for what? what type of uh, weather or morning or afternoon or, or it depends with your client or you had to schedule with them what do you want to have your pictures to be in the morning or afternoon i understand what you're saying uh first of all um i always prefer when the sun is on a 45 degree angle if i have a choice so let's say later in the day is always a better time but if they have small kids in play that need to nap and all of that then they dictate then the kids dictate. So, for instance, if you're photo, if if all of a sudden you're photographing at 1:30, 2 o'clock, right after lunch, before nap, in July, then you're going to be looking for a lot of overhangs, a lot of you go on, go to an area where there's big trees, where you can put them under the trees, and the trees become subtractive lighting, and then you can uh, adjust to the quality of light based on light direction that's going in along with some speed lights that are going to fill, and uh, away you go. If you're able to work later in the day under sweet light conditions, like right about now, I mean, you have better, better results, meaning you, it'll be easier to photograph because of the light condition. Okay? And during the day, it's harder. But if you understand it, and you can manipulate your lighting, then you'll be okay. Thank you. Pleasure. <clears throat> Sam, you talked about uh, projecting real-time images on the wall to give them some sort of idea. So when do you do that? In the second sitting or like you use the uncropped images from the camera or right where you use them? When do I do that? Well, basically you photograph. Once you photograph, you're going back to the, your studio, you're processing. You know, I never do it at the same day. Okay. It's impossible to do, okay? So you have to, you have to plan your sales and your, your sales plan, okay? You have to be ready for it. Pick those images because still they have to decide it. So you process all the images or what? 
I process all the images that have a chance to be sold. If something has closed eyes or the expression is no good, it's not, they're not going to see it. You're just wasting your time. Um, but a lot of times we don't understand, meaning let's call it, I don't understand what mom and dad are looking for in their kids. So there might be a look that I think is fantastic. For them, they might look at it and say, well, I don't like that attitude. And they like that look. Now, because I'm looking for a fine art thing, they're not looking at the same thing. So you cannot decide, as long as the expression looks good, they have to make that final, okay. final click. OK? Thanks. Presentation. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions over there. Uh, one is relating to the sales. Another one is relating to the posing over there. So uh, I've been doing uh, lots of family photography over there. And the toughest one, which I find, is less than six months old babies over there. How do you pose them like when family wants to go along with them? Like, say, like uh, photographing a baby itself with a fine background is uh, kind of OK. But when they ask for, like, say, with the grandparents, parents, everybody in there, how do you, like, a Six-month baby? Yeah. Or less than, yeah. Or new. Or less than of, that? Yeah. Well, they basically either have to hold this child. And, and what happens is if they have to hold the child, um, in order for the child to have as much impact as the adult, yeah. they either have to be straight up and the child has to be pretty close. If the child is sitting there, maybe they can lean in with the child. They could, you can't put the child, let's say, on the ground and the parents standing up and all that because there's so much distance. And then you have the parents that are so, they're towering so big and all that. And, and at the same time, when we're um, posing, the whole idea about the posing, regardless if it's a six-month baby, a two-month baby, so on and so forth, is balance. Balance, width, and height. So basically, I mean, if you had a couple and the couple are exactly the same, here's my hand, they're exactly the same, you go 45 degree angle, that's good. Let's say you have a couple now, and this is the couple, right? One is wider than the other. Well, you can't do this. So basically what happens is the, the one that's a little bit bigger has to come in behind so that it's a balance. The same thing is happening with the kids. So you basically, you're, you're playing a balance game where you're balancing, and at this point, then the child can be in front, and you're creating pyramids with your posing. So basically, it's a triangle. And in, including if you're photographing groups, they're all triangles. So you, it's a one, two, three, and then it keeps going. One, two, three, keeps going, keep going. You can clothesline this forever. And then you have another row of three, and you just keep going. Okay, and it's the same thing. So um, let's say it's mother, father, uh, mom, dad, baby, or whatever. Two parents and a baby, same thing. One, two, right? And then the child in front, three. So the smaller child has to be closer to the camera so that that way everything starts to balance. Okay. Thanks for that. Uh, the second one was for, uh, maybe I'm asking your business secret, but uh, it's kind of uh, like when you're saying 20% is shooting over there from the time perspective or say effort perspective in there, uh, does your profit margin lies on, like how, how do you balance your profit margin among the prints and the uh, shooting time over there? Uh, basically, it, it all goes into a mix, and uh, what you need to do is, um, is that your business model has to have a formula. And the form there are numbers to the formula that has to work, regardless on how much time you shoot to how much time you're producing. Your product has to be sold based on a formula, let's say, of a times four. You take all your expenses, and your expenses can't be more than, let's say, 25% your product expense, your, um, your building, rent, cars, and all that can't be more than 25%. Your staff can't be more than 35%. And then you had, that leaves you a 15% profit per se. Is it 15% profit in the end? Probably not. Because at times we're reprinting something, uh, you know, your something breaks down, you gotta fix it. So you're basically playing in that buffer. The other thing that happens in that 15% that's supposed to be a profit that it doesn't exist is somebody's going to ask you for a discount. So if somebody asks you for a discount because it's a volume discount, 
regardless if the order is $10,000 or the order is $1,000, the numbers still are the same. So basically, how much of that are you, can you afford to give us a discount? So you can't throw it as a number. If you took an order and it was $1,000, and they say, oh, come on, give me a discount. And uh, they say, okay, knock off 300. Well, you can't afford to do that. That's 30%, right? So you have 15% to play with. What's your number? 5%? You can give away 5 7%? You still, gotta, you still need something left. There is a buffer. So if you work in your formula, you know exactly how much you can give away. And it doesn't, and it doesn't work on a, on a dollar uh, number, per se. It's by formula, okay? That make, that's the easy way to, to, to figure it out. Hi, Sam. Hi. I have uh, one question, but I'm going to ask it two different ways because I'm not sure exactly which way it makes the best sense. So the question is, um, what do you market more? Is it your company's brand or your company's products? Or asked a different way, is the marketing more about the products specifically or about your company's brand generally? In other words, what's the best way for you to reach your customers and show them why you're worth hiring? It's the brand. Then with the brand comes the product. It's the brand. The brand is always what you market first. The brand is marketed based on the quality products that it sells. It's not the product that makes the brand. It's the brand that makes the product. You can have, um, you can have five people using the same product and the product will never look the same. You can have five people that photograph with Nikon equipment. It doesn't mean that every one of them is going to look exactly the same. One has a different vision from the other. I'm not going to say one is better than the other. It's not important. What's important is one has a different vision than the other, so the, the looks are going to be different. So if you're printing it on, um, on whatever paper is fine art, it doesn't really matter because whatever you photograph is going to look different on that piece of paper, per se. So it is the brand but you need it together. Hopefully I answered the question. <laughs> Hi Sam, I have another question. Yeah. So how you uh, handle this kind of uh, situation, a client that they said, okay, you can take me a shoot with, the pot, uh, with your family, but I need only the software without printing. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna tell you that uh, in, in a lot of cases, that's what's going on. Um, and what I would do is suggest is to ask why what it is. Is it a commitment thing? And, and I don't blame them in a way because some people, you might say to them, listen, you know what, with the product, it's going to cost you $1,000. And they're saying, well, I don't know if I like it. I don't know if I'm going to like this product. I don't want to commit to $1,000, but I'll commit to $250 to come out and, and for you to photograph it, to capture the images. And a lot of it has to do with that. Okay. But if you can say to them, we're going to photograph it as a session. I'm going to view it. You're going to view it. They'll say, but I want the files. The files are not going to be edited. And to me, edited means retouched. It doesn't mean white balanced. They're not going to be. The product will never look the same. And I'm usually, I'm not really interested in doing that. So it's more for viewing. okay? And then at that point, it's your salesmanship along with, the, with showing the right product. And that's the reason that they came to you, right, to take it to that level. So if you want, you can actually make them a deal. Say, I'll come out and photograph. You don't have to commit to the images. But any images you're going to do, I have to print. Period, right? And that's the way to do it. It's the only way you can make this work, right? It's like a car company. If you go to a car dealership and say, I want to buy the car, don't give me the wheels, don't paint it, I'll take care of it myself. Can you actually buy that car? Nobody will sell it to you. So we should be able to do the same thing, right? No problem. Hi, Sam. Um, I just was curious about how you went about creating your own style. How I went about creating my own style? Yeah. OK. Um, I'm going to say that everybody has a style embedded in them. And it's just a matter of pulling it out of you, number one. But in order to do that, you need to be able to see what other people do and actually understand how things work. Meaning, 
how the, the photography fundamentals work in, in a nutshell. Meaning, how does light work? How does lens perspective work? When you put it all together, what are we looking for? How do I create this image with three different looks using different products or different lenses? And I mean, and, and that's basically one of them. The other thing is, once you get to the point where you actually have this camera in your hand and you visualize what you want to do and you actually get it, you've reached a beginning of a different world. Okay, you haven't made it to the, there's no making it because you're always learning, okay? You're learning all the time. But that, that was one of the things for me is to be able to visualize and get it on my sensor or film in those in the old days the way I visualized, which took a lot of effort. Because we all have a vision. It's just a matter of getting the vision onto that camera or onto the sensor. All right, fair enough. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, guys, uh, I think that's about where we'll stop. If you do have any other questions, uh, Sam and, and any of the uh, Nikon staff will be here to answer any questions on gear you have or on, on any more tips that uh, Sam has on photography in general or portraits like he just talked about. So uh, let's give Sam a big round of applause. Thank you. And as I mentioned at the very beginning, we have been doing a series of not only business of photography seminars, but we've also been doing just random uh, photography seminars as well. We've done astrophotography, landscape, travel, done a whole kind of wide gamut. And we are going to continue to do those throughout the summer. So keep an eye on Instagram, on Facebook, and just look for the, uh, for the announcements that we'll make for the next one that we'll have in our series. Yeah.